Now, I don't want to finish on a bleak note, okay? Because, of course, uh, it's almost tempting at this point after 35 minutes of, uh, oh my God, you know, head exploding, all the risk. Uh, you might think, okay, I'm never going to use that. It's not a good answer either, right? We have the technology, we can use it for good, and it's really a, a good idea. So first of all, let me mention that in, uh, in fact, just now, um, there is a summit taking place in Geneva, and this summit is called AI for Good, and that's a very nice initiative sponsored by United Nations, and what they are going is basically trying to get together and what we need, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon, but the, 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 the ultimate goal, if you want, would be to create a kind of Geneva Convention of AI. Okay? Like how can we have, like we have for wars, where there are a few things which are pretty much accepted by all nations, okay? how can we have the same kind of thing for AI? And that should be something which is universal. So this uh, is what doing. Microsoft happens to be platinum sponsor, so we, we take those things um, quite at heart. So that's one good thing. And then after that, we have some nice examples. So for example, this example is going to show you how AI can be used to improve inclusiveness. So when we talk about ethics and you know, inclusion and all that, AI can be totally used to exclude people, like we saw in the case of the, you know, the, the criminal risk, etc. But it can also be used to include people. I have one more video, and again, I'm sorry about the sound. It seems to be a technical issue here. The Sing AI. So what I'm going to do is just cut the sound, and I'm just going to comment. So basically, it's a great use cases for inclusion. Now, one thing I want to mention about that is that those services are super easy to use for developers, because we have a suite of services that we call cognitive services. And if you have the occasion to check them out, you can just go online and look for Azure Cognitive Services. And you have a set of, of services doing text recognition, translation, speech-to-text, text-to-speech, doing uh, custom vision, facial recognition, emotion recognition, etc., etc. We have a number of these things. And you can use them as SDKs. So if you do .NET, you can use them quite easily. I have some demos online if you want to check them out. If you do um, JavaScript, if you do Java, you can use them. If you don't do any of those, you always have the possibility to go with REST because all those APIs are REST APIs anyway. So they are very easy to use and to consume and of course to create applications for that. Good, so in, in uh, conclusion, so at Microsoft, I don't know if you know our motto, but uh, basically we are trying to empower every person and organization to achieve more, okay? And uh, specifically with AI, we try to do that, but we also try to do that in an ethical manner, with inclusive design, and we try to really build trust in technology. So I hope that if you do AI, you understand those issues now. If you didn't before, probably you did at some point. But it's important, and I hope we can all work together to create a, a better future because I think those systems are really going to change the life of people. Okay? I want to thank you very much for your attention. Um, I put the slides at this address. If you give me a couple more hours, I will update the slides with the links that I was not able to show you. So if you go to this link, you will find the slides and everything. And uh, hopefully it was useful for you. I will stick around a bit more, so if you have questions, feel free to come and talk to me. I uh, will leave the stage so that Donovan can prepare for his keynote. Thank you so much for your attention and have a great evening. Thank you.